MicroStation has many dimensioning tools. In addition, a variety of dimensioning attributes define the appearance of dimensions. The easiest way to set these dimension attributes is by using predefined dimension styles. Dimension elements placed with a dimension style are automatically updated if the dimension style is changed. Continuing in the proposed restaurant DGN file, we're going to set the level to A Anno Dims. Then, we'll make the Dimension Linear tool active. This can be found in the Dimensions ribbon group of the Annotate tab. With the Dimension Linear tool, each dimension is placed in line or chained and is computed from the endpoint of the previous dimension. Coming into the Tool Settings window, we're going to set the dimension style to Arc Slash. The alignment will be set to View. We'll make sure that the option is enabled for Dim Offset and we'll set this value to be 900. The linear size icon will be enabled as well as the annotation scale. And let's make sure that association this is disabled. So now that our tool is set, let's begin our task here. Our task is to dimension the building exterior along the north side. So we'll zoom into the area where column E4 is located. Here, we'll snap to the outside corner of the building and issue a data point to select the start of the dimension. We'll move our cursor to the right, snapping to the start of the window near column E5. We'll issue a data point to select the endpoint of the dimension. Then our third data point is to place the dimension. However, let's not reset. As you can see, the tool remains active, hence allowing you to string together more points along the dimension. So we're going to continue placing the dimension string. We'll move our cursor to the right, snapping to where the brick veneer starts again, near column E6. We'll issue a data point here, and continue to move to the right, snapping to the building corner at column E6. Here, we'll issue a data point. And we're going to continue this pattern of placing extension lines at either wall openings or building corners. We'll traverse the building to the right until we reach the last point at column C9. And when we reach column C9, we'll reset to complete the dimension string. Now, let's navigate the view to where the restrooms are located. In the tool settings window, we need to disable dim offset. Then coming into the view, we're going to provide both vertical and horizontal linear dimensions for both restrooms. It is important that we try to place our start and end points of the dimension string in these exact locations. In areas that are short distances, such as wall thicknesses, we'll leave these as placed. We don't have to be so worried about these text locations because later we'll come back and clean up the dimension text locations. So now let's navigate our view to the southeast corner of the building at column A9. In the tool settings window, we're going to enable dim offset again and set the value to be 900. Our next task is to dimension the building exterior along the east side. So we'll start a new dimension here by snapping to the building corner at column A9 and issue a data point. We'll move in an upward direction, snapping to the first wall opening and issuing a data point. We'll move out to the right and issue another data point. Like the pattern before, we'll place extension lines at either wall openings or building corners and then ending at column E6. So we just placed a dimension along the east side of our building exterior. Our next task is to create a stack dimension along the east side. In the tool settings window, 
we're going to now change the dim offset value to 1370. Coming back into the view, we're going to start the dimension at column A9. And set the dimension endpoint at column E6. We'll move the cursor to the right and issue another data point to place the dimension. Continuing with laying out the dimensions for our building, we're going to now navigate our view to the southwest corner of the building. It is here that we're going to dimension the storage area. Before we do that, with our cursor in the view, let's right press and hold, and from the contextual menu, we'll select the tool Level Off. With this now active, we'll issue a data point on the storage racks, hence turning off the level A equipment. Now coming into the tool settings window, we'll set the dimension style to arc slash, the alignment to view. Let's disable dim offset, and let's enable the icon select multiple elements. We are then prompted to select the start of the selection line. For this, we'll issue the first data point in between the wall line and the column grid line. Next, we'll issue a data point inside the opposite wall line between the column grid line. And then our final step is to place the dimension. As you can see, whatever geometry that the selection line crossed, it dimensioned to that intersection. For now, we are finished laying out these dimensions. In an upcoming module, we will use modification tools to clean up these dimensions. So let's now open up the level display. This can be found along the Home tab in the primary ribbon group. From here, let's turn the level A equipment back on. During this lesson, you learned how to place linear dimensions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.